Hey everybody, welcome back to another Krita tutorial. Today we're going to be continuing our transform series and talk about the warp transform and how to use it. So we're going to activate our transform tool, go to tool options, and the warp transform is going to be the third option from the left. So if you hover over it, it'll say warp. We can click on it. So as you can see, it's very different from the free transform. Instead of little boxes, on the edges or the corners we have little circles and the line instead of solid is dashed and it's connected um, to make four squares so basically what this is doing is you can select any of these points and start warping that area that surrounds that point so we'll just go ahead and start moving it just to show so as you can see it's kind of warping my image based on that point and it's doing some crazy stuff here so if I hit enter that's what it will look like with my warp so if you're using this and you're like well this is great and all but you need more control let's say you want more control around the face you can actually incre uh, increase the subdivisions over here it's default to three so this is one two, three, one, two, three. So if we do it to four, we now have four subdivisions, both horizontally and vertically. So I can focus more on this area over here. I don't know if I'll make it more of an alien face. And squish this down here. This is obviously really drastic, really <laughs> exaggerated. If you're using the warp tool for your own work, you're most likely going to be doing small nudges here and there. Yeah, we'll just have fun with it. <laughs> Something like that, right? Or if you want way more subdivisions and you just want to do some really fine tuning here, you can do that as well. So the anchor strength, these little points here are called the anchors. If you want to mess around with how strong they are, you can do that with the flexibility here. There we go. So this is going to affect more of the area, whereas if this was zero, it wouldn't be affecting as much. So by default, it's oops, uh, already at strong and rigid. The strongest is going to be the most uh, deformation. Oh, I think I broke it. Hold on. Can we do that? There we go. So that's much stronger than, say, this so it's pretty strong you can see it's kind of making it overlap itself Oops. but this uh, i don't know how to pronounce the word so i'm not going to i can get a much stronger pull if i if i do this versus oh there we go versus this i have to pull much farther to even get it to the to get the boxes here to a more drastic point. All right, so let's say you really want to focus on one area, and you can, well, you can add more subdivisions to focus on that one area. Maybe it's not enough. You can actually go ahead and draw your own points. So we're just going to go ahead and draw these points here. Okay, we're going to make keep it at the strong rigged one and we're going to lock the points so when we lock it that means we can go ahead and start tweaking this with the image now it is affecting everything else around it it's kind of keeping these points this area is kind of stuck it's not um, as freely affected so I can go ahead and make my changes to this but it will affect those images or the rest of the image as well I don't have any points to keep it down so if I clear them, let's add a bunch of points here, and we'll just add some points here as well, just to keep it down, lock them. Oops. So as you can see, I'm not getting as much movement in the rest of the image, except when I actually move it, because it's kind of like, you're pinning it down basically. Think of it as a piece of paper and you're putting a bunch of pins in it and you're only focused on one area, or a fabric even. Fabric would be a better, 
example than paper. So yeah, there we go. So the point over here isn't affecting this area as much, but if you see, like this area needs to be pinned down a little bit more, you can add more pins to there. So I can unlock them, add more pins so it stays in place. Add that one up here, lock them again, and go back and do my edits. There's much less movement all over by doing this. So yeah, that's it for the warp tool. I'll unlock that and I'll actually reset that. Uh, yes, this was another short video, but very simple, very interesting, that's for sure. You can get some very um, interesting outcomes with the, the warp tool. I would recommend playing around with it, kind of get a feel for if you like it or not. I can see if it wasn't something that artists like to use too often. It is very sensitive to your edits, so it's something to keep in mind when you do use it. But it's definitely good for helping to warp certain areas like maybe if um actually turn that on here so let's add a couple of subdivisions maybe that the, the area here wasn't the right perspective or maybe i just need to stretch it out a little bit more but i didn't want to go and redraw it i can just go and fine-tune that and it doesn't even look like i mean you can kind of tell i warped it but at first for the most part it's pretty clean looking. So yeah, hopefully you guys enjoy this short tutorial and breakdown of what the warp tool is and how to use it. Make sure to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or anything, leave them in the comments below and I'll try to answer them. And I will see you guys in the next video where we will talk about the cage transform, which is a little similar, but different. <laughs> All right, see you guys in the next video.